There's a fight heating up in the education world over the use of race in college admissions. You cannot remedy past discrimination with new discrimination, and that's what colleges but, but are doing. But the, the, the discrimination was so extensive that we had to make colleges just for black people so we could go to college. Right. Well, Asians are the largest growing segment in the American populace, and yet their numbers at, at your Harvards, at your elite universities, don't change. Some Asian American groups say that race-based affirmative action policies actually hurt their chances of attending top colleges. The groups filed a complaint with the federal government in 2015, alleging that Harvard discriminates against Asian American applicants. The Department of Justice agreed to investigate that claim. Does affirmative action hurt Asian Americans? First, we have to define the term. So affirmative action has a really long history. I think the term was probably first coined by President Kennedy. Rachel Kleinman is a senior counsel at the NAACP Legal Defense Fund. And that was with respect to employment programs, federal employment programs, um, but then really sort of expanded upon and put into place by President Johnson. And the idea was really to put some teeth into some civil rights laws and say, okay, our, our, the idea here isn't just to say there is equal opportunity, but to find ways to actually level the playing field. Since affirmative action policies were enacted, minorities and women have seen increases in university enrollment. The Supreme Court has ruled that the use of race in college admissions is constitutional, as long as explicit quotas aren't used. But some Asian American groups say quotas do exist. I think I had a 4.6 GPA, something around a 4.7. I had a perfect ACT score. Michael Wang applied to college in 2013. He was an outstanding student and even sang at President Obama's inauguration. However, he was rejected by every Ivy League school except UPenn. He filed a complaint with the Department of Education alleging that Yale, Stanford, and Princeton discriminated against him because he was Asian American. I definitely felt like really disappointed a little bit angry at that point as well. You're not sure why you got in or why you didn't get in. And I think that's what made it really hopeless for me because if I had to go through this all again, what could I do to maybe improve my chances? I don't have the answer to that. A 2009 Princeton study found that in order to get into America's top universities, Asian American students' SAT scores had to be 140 points higher than white students. 270 points higher than Hispanic students, and 450 points higher than black students. That is out of 1,600 points. So that is really unduly harm, creates so much burden on Asian American children. Yu Kong Zhao is the president of the Asian American Coalition for Education, a nonprofit fighting for Asian American educational rights. They argue that Ivy League institutions use racial quotas to the detriment of more qualified Asian American applicants. That is illegal. Most Asian American children want to have a big dream. In order to achieve that, they have to study with double efforts. Since the 90s, the population of Asian Americans in the U.S. has more than doubled, but their representation in top universities has remained about the same. If race is being used as a positive factor, meaning that it helps an application, that's good. When it harms the application, I feel like that's not fair. Can being of Asian descent actually disadvantage your college application? Affirmative action is not what is causing Asian Americans not to get into to schools. You know, racial quotas are not allowed. Um, and universities, as far as I know, are not using racial quotas. What they are using are holistic admissions policies, which do allow for some consideration of race as one among many factors. But you can't tell me that a kid who has to score 540 points higher just because of his race, over which he has no control, it's an immutable characteristic, is not being discriminated against. Why is it that it's affirmative action um, that they say is causing this, when in fact, in most of these institutions, they are majority white. You don't go to these institutions and feel overwhelmed by the number of black and brown students you see there and say, oh, they must be taking Asian American spots. It's, it's actually still a majority white school. So um, the fact that th this argument that somehow affirmative action is, is causing it um, doesn't really seem to have much of a logical basis. According to a survey by the Harvard Crimson, Asian Americans make up 23.5% of Harvard's freshman class. Black students only make up 11.2%. White students, a whopping 58.2%. Compare that to the percentage of college-age Americans of each race. Asians and whites are overrepresented. 
but black students are underrepresented. Despite the recent lawsuits, 67% of Asian Americans believe that affirmative action policies are needed. Yeah, I think there can be no question that, that we still need affirmative action, among many other things, both to provide opportunities and pathways to opportunities for people of all races, um, but also to create diverse campuses. Without affirmative action, we wouldn't be creating this diverse group of graduates that we need in order to, to lead this country, to create business, to compete in the global economy. Harvard has agreed to hand over years of confidential applicant records to the DOJ who will then decide whether they've been discriminating against Asian American students. From there, we could be looking at the next landmark affirmative action trial.